What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. Me and the rest of the Marsman crew are going to discuss our top 10 Halo games of all time. Also in the video, we're going to discuss the Halo TV series. What do we like about the preview, what we don't like, what are we excited about, and what are we straight up afraid of. Before we get to the video, please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And please make sure you join us on social media on both Twitter and Discord, and that's located in the description below. Which Halo game is the greatest of all time? And does Halo finally get a TV series that's worth watching? This is Mars Man Gaming. What's up everyone? This is Mars Man here, and welcome to Mars Man Gaming. Today, we have the Halo Roundtable event with the Mars Band crew, and it's going to be a good one. We have a packed show today with our top 10 Halo games of all time, and we're also going to discuss the Halo TV series in depth and kind of just give you our general feelings about the trailer so far. I know the, the show hasn't come out yet. We have like basically a month until the show finally releases, which is, you know, the hype level is real, but the question is going to be, how do we feel about what we saw so far? So... To kind of get us started, I want us to I want you to be reintroduced again to the Mars Band crew. To my left is Haki. Hey guys. And to my right is Langella Kill. What's up, everybody? So kind of to get us, uh, like I said, get us going today. Uh, I want to give us the list that I made. I made a whole video about my top 10 Halo games of all time list before. And I I, I had the Mars Band crew kind of devise up their own list of uh, what they thought were the best games. And we're going to kind of discuss what, what, you know, what I thought, what they thought, the pros and cons of each, and then we're just going to move on from there. So from what I hear, uh, Haki, you told me before that you didn't get to play Halo Wars 1 and 2, so you have a top 8 list, which is which is perfectly fine. Um, so basically top uh, number 10 and 9, me and Angelica will probably dive more into that, and then we're going to jump when we get to the top 8. I want to hear everyone's list. But if you have any input on any of the games we put on those two, you can kind of give us your pros and cons there as well, right, man? Yeah, sure. Sounds good. All right. So obviously, this is a heated debate. Everybody can have their own opinion about you know what what games are considered to be their top ten, and everyone has their own opinion, which is perfectly fine. But when I made my list, I kind of based it off of the story. I talked about the multiplayer, the gameplay, and just big thing the replayability. I mean, sometimes people can play a game for a while, but if most people looked at that game were like, "This is." boring and there's nothing to do here that kind of put that lower on the list for me so let's kind of jump right in at number 10 i put halo wars one um and i'll i'll, I'll give a little pros and cons of my my perspective first when i did my video i'm not going to go through the whole thing but the biggest con for me for this game was one the character development of this game was horrifying like i felt like these characters had Legit zero character development whatsoever. Uh, I kind of mentioned the fact that like Captain Cutter was legit a cardboard box character. Uh, no sense of humor, nothing attached to him. And I also felt like the story didn't have enough impact. It didn't have enough oomph behind it to make you feel like this is something important that I should really play and and care about. You know what I mean? So that was kind of my, my biggest issues with that game. So, Langelica, what do you think for number 10 on your list? Yeah, I, I watched your list, and I'll just say my list is similar set up to what yours is. You look at the campaign, you look at multiplayer, um, and I also added to when the game came out at that time, the impact that it had at that time, um, which is something uh, to consider as well. Uh, but I agree with you on number 10, I had Halo Wars, and I know it's it's hard um, because the Halo Wars games and the other Halo games are vastly different type of games. So it's not easy to compare. They're not really apples to apples it's really an apples to oranges comparison. Um, but I agree with you. The story uh, just didn't resonate. And um, I didn't really like the characters. The characters weren't very good. And, uh, you know, there were some fun aspects of it. I, I did play it and I had a good time playing it at times. Um, but the balance of the gameplay was not not very good. Um, mm -hmm. There would be some missions. And if you re replay it, some missions you will cakewalk through. And then some mission, the same mission, if you replay it, which I like the variability, but it's just so unbalanced. Um, when you replay it, you like you can't get by uh, the mission. And then they have the real famous one um, in the city uh, where you have to protect different points. And I remember me playing it. It took hours, hours. Yeah. And I think you played it 
yep. and you beat it the first time. And like, we kind of all had the same, you know, pathway, but again, I like the variability, but when it's too, it's just, it's just too weird. And, uh, for that, um, Halo Wars to me, um, is number 10. I just don't think it's a very good game overall. Yeah. No. So hockey, I know that you didn't really play the game, but I think the biggest thing that a lot of people looked at the pros about Halo Wars was like the premise. Like it was a game that was supposed to be before everything, before Halo Reach, before all the favorite Halo games a lot of people play. Mm -hmm. So like, what'd you kind of think about the premise? I know that that's something that you can definitely have an input on there. Yeah. So um, I, I always think that it's good to have, you know, a, a prequel to such amazing games like Halo, you know, so yeah. to kind of figure out how it all started. Um, I believe it was, was it, the, was the banished first in Halo Wars One? It was Halo. Uh, Halo Wars Two is the banished. Yeah, yeah. But this is still all a prequel. Yeah, this um, is to, to Halo in general. Now, um, so I think it's always important for, um, again, to have the Halo, you know, uh, saga to really start off um, knowing what really happened. Um, mm -hmm. Again, yeah, you can give some background it, stuff. You know, like make it make it Halo. have like a full circle effect. You know. Exactly. Now, now for maybe for people that don't know, uh, I know Frank had brought it up, you know, kind of not apples to apples. It's, it's a completely different uh, way to play the game. If you can just explain what type of game it is, maybe the, the people that, that might not. Yeah. Know, so, um, yeah, so this is an, R, is an RTS or a real time strategy game. So it's like it's nothing like we've seen before. And I that was one of the pros I gave about this game at number 10. I said, this is the first time you really notice that a console a console actually has an RTS game that actually worked. And for most people at the time, PCs was only the place you could play RTS games like, like uh, you know, uh, StarCraft and things like that. And this is like one of the first times that you could actually play a real-time strategy game and it worked. It was fun to play. It had a good gameplay stuff, good, good gameplay mechanics and stuff, but it just... The, the backing, the importance of this game literally just lacked everything. And I kind of mentioned the fact in the show that uh, in the video that, uh, you know, I know Bungie at the time had limited Halo Wars to really be only about certain things. They didn't want to expand too much. They didn't want them to create their whole new story. They just wanted them to say, all right, this is the only thing that you can focus on and everything else is fine. And that kind of limited them. But even with that being the case, I always felt like you could have done more with the characters than what you had in the first place. You didn't do much there. So for me, There's I just feel like yeah. games that, that have good character development. Right. Yeah, not, I know a lot of people are going to say, "Well, it's a strategy game, so where, what are you going to like play some other strategy games?" And you'll there's like, a yeah, I completely agree. There's a lot of strategy games that have a lot of good story elements to it, and this one just didn't have that. I felt like you could have done so much uh, with that, and the kind of transition us into having a grand opportunity and not doing much of little to it at all. At my number nine, I have Halo Five Guardians and Halo Five. Um, Basically, the only and I mentioned in the video, only reason why this is not number ten is because the multiplayer was probably one of the most populated multiplayers since Halo Three. And the, basically, this if you're looking at it from I guess the gameplay perspective, positives is that it gives you a shakeup of things that it's never done before. Um, but it's also on the negative side, like this is feels like you need to train to be a good player here. Like I know that me. I, I, me personally, and I, I want to give anything for, for hockey because you can talk for yourself on this, but I trained extensively to be good at this game. I literally, I was horrible at the pistol. And I remember in the beginning, I was so bad. I, I got mad at myself. So I like, I'm going to train. I'm going to go out like Rocky Balboa and start training in Warzone Assault so that I can get better at the pistol so that, and not use anything else but the pistol. Just use the pistol only so that I can become good at this game. And I did. And, but that was like the, that's a problem. You can't do that for common people like just trying to have fun. The other biggest downside, the story is probably one of the worst story games, especially Halo, I've ever seen with little to nothing actually happening and literally zero character development. But I don't want to take up all the spotlight. Uh, uh, let's go. Let's go hockey here first. Since you really I know that you, you didn't have a nine, but I know you have some ex, uh, experience on your Halo 5s here. So what, what what was your general feeling about Halo 5 on this? Yeah, before so, we jump um, out, I'm, I'm going to get into, um, you know, I, I didn't play the two um, uh, Halo Wars games, so I, I have a top eight. Yeah. Uh, when we get to the, you know, at least when you guys get to eight, mm -hmm. I'll explain my eight. But um, yeah, Halo 5 was, well, I can say at the top of my list, as mm -hmm. in 
one of the not so um, appealing Halos. Um, but again, like you said, the multiplayer saved it, and I'll kind of get a, a little bit into that um, when I get to my my um, you know my top games. But um, yeah, man, it's it was pistol or die. You know, like you, <laughs> yeah. you, had, to, you had to be good at the pistol. Um, or you just had to be, you had to have an elite controller. Like I, I know you had gotten your first, or maybe not your yeah, first. My, it was my first elite controller during that time. Yeah, it was. And it, it was. saved, it saved my, I guess you say, save my KD ratio on that one. Uh, it definitely, <laughs> yeah. I was, I trained myself without it. And then I finally, I got one and I was like, this changes the game. This makes it so much easier to play. Um, yeah. But it, it, I really had to feel like I would play with an elite controller, Halo 5. And I'd play with a regular controller on everything else. That's literally how crazy it would be. Where I was like, oh, I don't want to mess with the Elite controller on this game. I'm just going to use a regular one. And Halo 5 came around. I was like, all right, time to whip, whip the uh, Elite controller out. It's time to play Halo 5. Um, yeah. But yeah, so anything else before we jump to uh, Langella Kills uh, number nine? Uh, no, I'll get a little bit more into where Halo 5 um, mm -hmm. went for me. So uh, Langella, go ahead and... Uh, yeah, and so Langella Kill, what do you think for your number nine? Yeah, and I don't always love just completely agreeing with everybody but my number nine is also halo five as well um and it was really close for me to put it at 10 um and and it's sad to say because the multiplayer is actually i think it it's better than what halo wars one and halo wars two brought and even halo four brought um but i'm just going to start with the biggest disappointment and that is the campaign um, the campaign kind of just felt like they lied to you. And I, I, we don't know too much about the background uh, behind the scenes on what was going on, but they marketed out a game that was supposed to bring a certain storyline, or at least it felt that it was going to, and you're talking about commercials. We were getting slammed with commercials. This wasn't just rumors. These were put out on television, told to us. Um, and what they came with was just such a disappointment. Mm -hmm. um and i actually i know there's a, a vast majority of people who are you know it's got to be about master chief or it's or it's worthless right i'm not in that boat i actually appreciate when games try to bring in other major characters um if they do it correctly and halo the series proved it can in another installment which we'll talk about and did it very well and that character is loved to this day in the halo community in the arbiter Right. Mm -hmm. So the Arbor was brought in to be a main character. And so it works if you do it right. But the one they brought in with Locke was just so dull and so boring. And the hunt for the truth stuff was just so poorly done. It just felt like you were being lied to. And I think that that to me is the worst. You can have bad games, but when you like lie to your audience, that is the worst thing. And then for the multiplayer, I mentioned the good parts, but the worst parts are the microtransactions, the loot box of uh, getting guns. And the kids who have the most gold packs are gonna they're gonna have the biggest weapons. And when you play Warzone, which is one of their best uh game modes, you're gonna get wrecked when somebody yep. has the the high end guns or high end vehicles and you're you don't have that. Um so it, it the balance was just really tough. Um and you mentioned the pistol stuff, but the balance of the game in multiplayer was really hard. And actually it, it, and you know, we've gotten good enough that we could play, mm -hmm. um, and it would drive us crazy at times. But if you're a new gamer and you came in a little later when Halo 5 came out, I don't know how you started because that is a brutal way. To yeah. No, I completely agree. And and that's uh, a lot of the other points you mentioned were things I, I talked about in the video too. The microtransactions thing just elevated how bad this game was. Like you you can't make a game basically be a pay, to, pay to win. You know what I mean? That's yeah. basically what it did. And as if you took Warzone and you didn't have that microtransactions component, you just had like the car, like the wreck guns like like that. The game mode would have been fantastic, and I always thought, hey, Halo Infinite can always add like a Warzone game mode and just ha not have the microtransaction part there. Just have just have that you can use car like your requisitions and buy a gun for that you know for that whatever level you're at. And I think that would be such a good game mode to have. But unfortunately, Halo Five missed the mark on that, and their story was just awful. Uh, yeah. Zero emotion. I felt zero emotion yeah. playing it. I had this hype, this hype building that I was like, oh, Chief is maybe the bad guy, and then all yeah. of a sudden. Like his only down thing that he did was say, "I'm I'm not going home." Like, yeah. oh, and they wow. tried to make him a bad guy during the game, but it just yeah. doesn't resonate. Like, Chief no. didn't change character. No, he, he didn't. He didn't, he didn't even show do. that he changed at all. He yeah. didn't show that he changed. And they were saying, "Oh, now he's, he's now insane. we're hunting him." He's like the same exact no dude. Nothing, no happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. 
Literally, it is. And then they yeah. just – how about we didn't even mention Cortana, right? So Cortana oh, dies part. in four. She dies in four. And then yep. literally you, you're this, not even – She's good. She's good You're now. not even halfway well, through the game and you know she's, she's alive. back you, and she's you didn't know that? You didn't know that she's alive? And the, what was the whole the whole thing you found out the whole time? That, that she's alive. She's the bad guy. And – that's how the game ends too. Like yeah. nothing changed. Nothing and we found that out in mission two. And we nothing found actually that out happens. practically in mission two. That, that's not even saying. like a midway point or like towards the end. We found out in the beginning of the game. It made no it, it was it, it was just so poorly written. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you, dude. It doesn't make any sense. Hold on, my camera is bugging out for a second. I just had to fix it. All right, we're good now. Um <laughs> gotta love technology. So just go. I, I could spend all day talking about Halo Five. Yeah. To be honest, it, it's kind of. <laughs> it's literally I could spend all day long talking about it. But uh, so okay, so let's go to the number eight, and my number eight is uh, Halo Wars Two. So I basically when when I look at Halo Wars Two, and like I said, I know hockey, you didn't really get to uh, talk about this one as much, uh, which is fine, um, just because you get to play it. But when I look at Halo Wars Two, the biggest thing I notice is. They they actually develop characters. They actually have people that are there. Like the banish being brand new was like a good idea. It gave you like a sense of all right. So we have this new bad guy group that's you know that could be supposedly stronger than the Covenant, which is a cool idea. You know you have uh, you know these new bad characters that are are there. Cool idea, but nothing actually occurs in the game. It feels like they like they just fighting. And they're fighting on the on the abandoned arc, which is like if you don't know, it's the area where Halo Three majority of the game is taking place. So the, after after Chief basically blows up the arc, you know this is the remnants of it, and you're like, this is a cool thing. This is a cool situation that's going on. But then when you play the entire game, you get to the end, you literally see Cutter and, and Aatrox just looking at their battle plans, and you're sitting there like, like what what the hell just happened? What did I play? And I thought to myself, if you're playing this game on like legendary. Like, imagine, like, the annoyance that you must have that you straight up did this entire thing and nothing occurs. Like, nothing happens. And that's what happened to me. I played this whole thing and just nothing occurred. And I was just upset because I'm like, this is this smoother gameplay than the previous one. It actually has character development. Cutter is not a cardboard box character like he was in the previous one. And I'm sitting here just like, what? Well, how could you, like, screw this up so bad? Right? So... I, that's how I look at it. And, and probably the last thing before I, I give it off to somebody else, the microtransactions in this game were possibly worse than Halo 5. Like, that's that's how scary it is. When you're playing this one online game mode called Blitz, literally probably one of the funnest game modes you can play on an, a real-time strategy game. It's solely tied to pay to win. Like, Halo 5, yeah, you know what? You buy loot boxes and you get these, like, fancy guns, but you still have to work to unlock that gun in the war zone. Like, you still have to, like, grind to get there. Blitz in Warzone 2, you can just buy the best level cards. Just straight up buy it. And then, like, it's proven that you will have a better chance of winning because of that. Like, that's just insane. I don't I don't get people. It's called greed, but that's basically it. So that, that's my number eight. So, Linjo Kill, uh, what, do you, what was your number eight? Uh, same thing. Halo Wars 2. I think they improved on things from Halo Wars 1. Um, but like you said... If the game never took place, like you wouldn't have missed anything, right? It doesn't, it doesn't move the storyline. It doesn't, you know, give you pretty much more lore that that is necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just, it's a lot of fluff. Uh, they do introduce a banish, which was great. Obviously, they are an important part of the story, but out, everything outside that, um, they just, there, there wasn't nothing happened. Nothing happened mm-hmm. from start to finish that that made any significance, um, unfortunately. But they improved on things. Um, but they go down on this this list because they don't compare, at least fun wise, that I had versus the other installments. Even though they improved on their stuff in Halo Wars One. Mm-hmm. So Haki, now you now you're entering the list here. So number eight. What's your number eight? Yeah, what's your number eight? <laughs> All right, so um, let me just say my top. Uh, let's see, uh, my top five. I might get some hate from you guys or some shock from you guys. You know, because I switched it up. But what well, my number eight is going to be Halo ODST. Wow. All right. Wow. So, and again, I, I don't have 10, so that's just my, yeah, my yeah. so um Halo ODST, you know, orbital drop shock trooper. It was a very cool um it was a very cool thought. Uh, but my cons were 
and if you watched Marsilio's uh, or uh, Marsman's um, original video on this, um, it was just an expansion, pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. um, yep. It costed sixty bucks. It cost me sixty bucks. Um, no multiplayer, right? I know um, Frank. They took, said, they took Halo 3's multiplayer, basically. He said, "All right, here's our multiplayer." It was, there wasn't a real multiplayer, you know. Um, and like Frank said, like you don't need Chief, right? But you have to have someone that gives you a little bit of heart, right? No Chief, no heart. I didn't think it was. I, I thought it was mediocre. Um, mm -hmm. The multiplayer, um, and it was short. You know, I get it. It was just an expansion, but. Um, it was short. It like ended very abruptly. Me and my brother were playing it, you know, co-op and it just ended and you were just sitting there like, you know, the cut scenes were coming. You're just like, okay, cool. Let's go play Halo 3 multiplayer or something, you know. Um, there were still a couple cool pros, you know, the, it had good music. Um, mm -hmm. And the Halo usually comes with some fire music. Obviously, there are some installments that either don't have a ton of music or <laughs> wasn't that good. <laughs> right um and probably the coolest part of halo odst for me was the mini movie trailer mm -hmm. like before it came out like yeah. that was fire that gave me it, it showed me that they were able to make either a a movie or a tv show which they came out with um i think it was um halo reach um, it, or, it was a it, they made a halo movie. nightfall which well, what's the whole story behind it? And we'll get in more into that TV show. But that the director of that short, that commercial, was Neil Bloomkamp, who was the guy who made District 9. Mm -hmm. And the whole plan was that they would take the money from District 9 and make a Halo movie out of it. And it ended up falling through. And I always thought if you made a movie, the Halo movie, similar to District 9 in its way it's, it was acting out, I thought that would have been so cool to do. And that's what happened with that, that commercial. I know what you're talking about, Hucky. It yeah. it looked so cool and it was realistic. It like made it seem like Very this is brutal. Yeah. It was it was yeah. like, wow, this is crazy. Um no, they, they did make Halo um Fall of Reach though, right? Which was a mini. Yeah, but that was the fall of the fall of reach, so that was like an animated, that was like an yeah. animated one, which was a good story. And it's it's based on the books and you know, Chief and everything. Um, but yeah, there was an animated one. The only live action one was Nightfall, which was which is about Locke, and you're like, okay, yeah. so let's get some background on Locke, and they didn't do anything. Like it was just yeah. like, oh, okay, like yeah, that, no, yeah. Was, that was like the big pro for me. It was like the mini movie. It was it like did talk about emotion. You were you were that built there. that built the hype. Like oh my god, this is looks so real, and like you, you know, they're it, they're not really Spartans, right? I mean, they're the, the, the guy looked like he was a like a teenager, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know that by the drill sergeant and everything, you know. It's not like Master Chief was was you know getting dropped in. So it was that was probably the coolest thing about ODST. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, you know, I hear a lot of mixed reviews on ODST, so I, I get that. Um, let's go to my next one, number seven. I put Halo Four, and the biggest thing I looked at for Halo Four, if you're looking at the pros, I said the story was actually pretty solid. It, it gave you a a good starting starting point for a new trilogy. It left questions to be answered, and it kind of made you, it actually gave you emotional like feelings when you played the game because of the whole dynamic that they built between Chief and Cortana was probably the most, I think, the most uh, thoroughly you know written uh, compared to like maybe Halo Three and Halo Two because it, like they they gave a lot of emotion to connections between the two of them, and then obviously with the whole ending really brings it all home when you know you, you never thought you could possibly see Cortana being gone and she's gone and you're like all right well the question is how is Chief going to react and at the end of the game it made you wonder that like you're like wow Chief is going to be like drastically different um and that was like the best part about it the, the cons of this game was that it wasn't trying to be Halo anymore it was trying to copy Call of Duty and now you're having loadouts you're having like abilities being more important the game turned into a far range shooting game instead of it being close range which it's, it's supposed to be and it the, i think the worst part was the replayability it lost so many so many people like i think i had a stat on the video it lost like three quarters of the entire player base in the first three months of the game being launched and it was going up against black ops 2 which was considered one of the greatest call of duty games ever so it, that didn't really help but it just shows you that people were if they're if you're trying to make a call of duty competitor you know, you, you you have to make at least on same par as regular Call of Duty. Like if you're gonna have loadouts and all that drops and everything, you have to make it at least 
better or as good as Call of Duty is at the moment. Like Battlefield was always that oh they're competitor for Call of Duty because it, they're similar in a lot of ways. Halo is, is its own type of multiplayer game. Like it's an arena shooter. It's not a loadout shooter. So it's different. But you made it similar to Call of Duty and you failed on that miserably. So uh, Haki, let's go with you first on this one. Number seven for you. Yeah, so number seven now comes Halo 5. Um, and again, it's it like you guys were saying, the campaign was just, it was so bad. Um, the character development was was awful. Um, Cortana being one of the main culprits of, of, of that really bad character development. Um, and like, like Langella Kale said, like it, it almost felt like you were getting lied to, you know. Um, really, again, the only thing that saved it was that the multiplayer was very good. It wasn't, it wasn't the best multiplayer, but it was, I guess we can say, addicting. Like I loved playing that multiplayer, even mm-hmm. though it was very fast. Um, and again, you had to be good at the pistol, or you know, um, you were going to be getting killed a lot by a pistol, so you, you had to match that. Um, but again, the, the maps, um, forge being one of the, the coolest things, um, cause the halo community is, um, you know, uh, they're so good at making games and, and maps and, and fun things to do other than just playing, you know, a big team battle or something like that. So, um, multiplayer saved it from being number eight for me. Um, cause I had a lot of fun playing multiplayer and I played it for years, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we were playing. We were grinding for like six years straight. We were play- once the game came out. Me and you were playing since all the way to the end. I remember I was trying to get to one fifty two just to try to get these uh, fancy yeah. coatings from Halo Infinite. Me and you were playing all the way to the end almost. Yeah, exactly. And but again, I, you know, the, the cons still unfortunately outweigh the pros. You know, the microtransactions that you guys were talking about. Um, you know, Warzone. If you had money and you wanted to spend extra money on it, you would be better in in that aspect of Warzone. So. Um, I'm a firm believer of, of I spent 60 bucks on the game. I'm not. And I, Mars, I know you spent a little bit of money on it. But I am not spending any extra of my hard earned money on a game that I just spent money on. I'm not doing it. Same thing with this is that, uh, you know, out of left field, but same thing with Pokemon Go. When I was playing Pokemon Go when it first came out, I would walk and swipe the, you know, swipe the little Pokemon stop and get my Pokeball. I'm not spending money on a free game, on a freemium mm-hmm. game. You know? <laughs> freemium, yeah. Right. So, um, unfortunately the, the cons, um, there were more cons than pros, but multiplayer was good. And the Banshee was my favorite, uh, thing. It was, it was definitely the, well, probably the best version of Halo five. It was nasty. And um, I was nasty at it. So that was my favorite, favorite part of all the multiplayer, but yeah, that's, that's my number seven. So Langella kills number seven for you. What do you think? I have Halo ODST. And wow. A lot of things. I agree with that. Aki said um, that that pushed it down to seven for me. Um, it's because you pay. Let's just talk about value, right? You pay sixty dollars um, for an expansion pack, and that's what it was. Um, I really like the gameplay. I like the feel of the game. Like the the setting was really cool. Like the the music was really good. Like they hit on some big marks, but the game was short. And again, it cost you sixty dollars. There was no real multiplayer for it. Um, and although I did find the story interesting, you know, they, it was another thing where at the end they had that new alien species coming in and, and Halo doesn't really dive much into that after this game, they kind of just hinted to you all those, you know, that alien species actually correlates to what this group does, but like, they don't really say it, right? So you kind of spend the whole game to try to cap or align with the alien species that is going to help you now. And that was kind of the last year of it, right? So you know, there was definitely some good things that I liked a bit with the gameplay and music, but like you said, the, the cons outweigh the good on this one for me and knocks it down a couple pegs because of the value um, that it doesn't bring. Uh, it, it, they charge you a full game for not a full game. Mm-hmm. No, I get you. I get you. Hey, listen, I, like I said, this is this is where we start splitting off. This is where it gets intense here. We have a <laughs> bunch of different numbers everywhere. You guys are uh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm, uh, this is gonna be interesting then. So, number six, and this is where I think I, I'm a little more generous with this game compared to both of you. I have Halo 3 ODST at number six, and mm-hmm. the reason why I have it here, and I'll start with the pros first. The music of this game probably is one of the best I've I've heard from all the games, uh, and, and because it like 
it was so different. It was, I didn't expect it. It was like, I had a jazz component, like it had saxophone and all these orchestra background and it set the mood in from the, right in the very beginning. Like this is, this is one of those soundtracks you can listen to like just to chill out. Like this is one of those like classic ones, but even that being aside, the story writing I thought was pretty good. The downside. And like you, you guys said, it was it's short. Like it was interesting because this game didn't have any any Master Chief, obviously, it didn't have any of the bigger characters that you know. This is a brand new crew of you know the you know, uh, uh, a brand new crew of ODSTs. You know, Alpha Nine came out and, and they were all pretty solid. Each of them had their own character traits, their own you know things you like about them. You played as each one of them. Like you can, you have to applaud like Joseph Staten for the writing of this game, and he's now the you know the guy directing everything at halo infinite but he's the guy who wrote this game and he wrote it so that you kind of like the characters even if like the rookie he didn't do a thing he didn't say anything but you play as him and now you feel like everything you think is what he thinks buck instantly became like a legend in this game like this is the dude that was a halo 5 character because they tried to bring someone that you knew and you liked so buck became an instant favorite um, and I like that you kind of had a disadvantage. Everyone's so used to running and gunning and dominating with being a, a Spartan, but you're an ODST soldier now. Like you literally don't have the, the jumping ability or the health that you can do that. You have to be smart. And that was kind of the cool thing about that. But I agree with you. The cons of the game that's short, it's a really just a small piece of the story. Like it's like, I consider it to be like a Han Solo film. It's a really about an event that you really didn't think about. And then they kind of just like said, all right, here's this. And at the very end, did they tie any sort of importance? They're like, all right, here's a Covenant engineer, right? and he tells us where the Ark is. And you're like, like, nowhere did we ever reference this. Like, if you in Halo 3 were like, oh, we had, we actually had a top secret mission, and we found out where the Ark is, and this is why we're going here. Then you can tie in, like, just like they did with Star Wars, and have, like, the whole Rogue One film where you see that event happen. Like, but this, like, they're like, oh, the this is where the arc is. And you're like, I never once heard this. And now it's a, this is, this is why it's important. So pay attention. You never see that engineer again. Yeah. Never, never again. Never referenced, never it's saw him. Yeah. Just like pff, he's here. He, he was there. That was important. And that's it. Like, you know, and that was kind of like the, the downside because it's like with all these characters, I'm like, you could have even brought some of these other characters back in the other games. Cause I thought they did a good job here, but I agree with you. No multiplayer, but for a DLC or an expansion, basically, it was pretty good. I, I just thought that it was way too short for it. There's not enough bang for your buck for this. Yeah, and the cost is too high for an expansion. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go Langella Kill uh, for for your number six, and then we'll jump to Hockey. So, Langella Kill, what's your yeah, number six? Mine's uh, Halo 4, and um, i probably a little bit higher on the list than other people have it. And and to me, this is obviously 3 for three's first crack at taking over um, – for Bungie, so I know the, a lot of pressure for them. And I thought for a starter in the series, 4343, and again, that's why I mentioned in the beginning, when this game came out and the impact it had at the time, um, this was a starter game for a new series for 343. And I didn't think they did a bad job, I, especially on the campaign side. Um, again, the feel of the game is very different. I think that's one of its biggest knocks. It started to not feel like Halo anymore, and we were getting closer to COD. Um, and that's going to be a whole nother argument on games trying to replicate other rivals instead of being their own identity. And people like Halo because it feels like Halo and it plays like Halo. And it took all the way up to Infinite to get back to that, right? And we see that sometimes with Battlefield, right? Battlefield trying to uh, copy Call of Duty. Call of Duty is Call of Duty and people play it and it's a high seller for that. But people play Battlefield and people play Halo because they want to play those style games. It's not because they want to get loadouts. And so that's a big knock. But overall, I thought the campaign was pretty solid. You felt that emotional. You kind of felt like Chief changing in the Cortana thing. And that dynamic was interesting. And you wanted to see what was going to happen next when uh, when Cortana passed or when you thought she passed, right? You mm -hmm. thought it was going to be a big. So to me, setting up for the series, I thought they did a pretty solid job. But the multiplayer, I liked the way the maps were set up. There were some really solid maps. But the loadout system was a terrible, terrible system. Um, they just didn't do a really good job of that. And they, that was kind of a copying on the Call of Duty stuff, which just did not hit home. Yeah, so uh, so Aki, what did you get for your number six? Yeah, so uh, my number six, it's 
essentially just like uh, Langelico said, I mean, it's mine. Six is, is Halo four. Um, again, it, it had a good campaign. I was a fan of the campaign. Um, I thought the, you know, character development uh, was very good with, you know, chief and, and Cortana and everything. So good development there. Um, like you both said, the, downfall was the multiplayer i understand like langella kill said it was you know it was their first crack at 343 um and again like he, like you said i don't think they did a terrible job i thought the multiplayer was still fun to play i still played it um although like you both you know hit it right on the nail it was it felt like hot you know it felt it didn't feel like a halo game it didn't feel when i played it you know the playability afterwards was like i'm just playing Call of Duty with, you know, Master Chief and, and you know, uh, it, it didn't really feel like a, a Halo game. So I don't really have a ton to say about Halo 4. It was just, um, it was an okay game. Um, it beat out Halo 5 just because it was a better total game, uh, campaign and multiplayer than, than Halo 5 was. So that's my number six. I, again, I, I think it was a good game. I got you. I got you. you know what? Now this is where it gets on my list where it's going to get debatable. All right. This is where everyone's <laughs> going to start getting heated and stuff. So at yeah. my number five, I have Halo Reach. And this is where it's like all these games have very limited amounts of cons. But I have a few things that I have to pick with this game that make it drop to five for me. And the first off, I'll start with the pros to begin. And the online was fun. There was a good amount of uh, multiplayer maps that I liked. A lot of new guns that actually were pretty smooth and worked out. Like, I love the Grenader. I love the DMR. It was one of my favorite guns I liked using all the way through Halo 5. Um, the story of having you play as a, a Spartan squad, almost like you're playing like a Saving Private Ryan, but a Halo version of it, was very cool. I, I didn't expect it to be that way. Um, and that this is almost like the prequel to the mainline games was a great thing, too, because I always wanted to get prequels. I wanted to get some background on what was going on before Halo 1 even began, and this is supposed to serve as that, as that game. Um, so I thought they did a lot of good things with that. And you're adding in now abilities versus uh, having equipment, which was a big change from Halo 3 to Halo Reach. But I kind of liked how the abilities worked, and it made you want to play a different way, play like, you know, uh, have your own way of playing multiplayer, which I always enjoy doing, having your own creative choice. Now, the cons of this game is where I kind of analyze the, multi the campaign, and I say... There are some things you missed out on, and a lot of this had to do with the lack of, I think, in my opinion, I, I say this impact, but there was impact in this game, but the lack of how impactful it could have been. Halo Reach has you know, so much impact on this series, where it's, firstly, it's, it was the place where all the Spartans were trained for the first time, and at the same time as this is going on with the story with Noble Team, Master Chief and his squad are doing another big thing that's, that's, that's happening, and I always felt like by having like Master Chief be in this game in some capacity, you could have made this game more important. And let's just say that you didn't have Master Chief because you're like, no, I don't. We want to focus on him all the time. We want to do something else, which I completely understand. But who's another big villain that was still in the still in the Covenant, still in the big, you know, someone to focus on? That was I. Call, I mentioned this in a video. Thel Vadimin, which is the Arbiter, like this dude was the almost the top-level commanders of the Covenant attacking Reach and in Halo 1. You're telling me you couldn't make a character, make back, give some background on him? Because that was the problem. There's no antagonist. Your, your antagonist was the Covenant. There was no one that you were like, oh, I'm striving to beat this guy. I'm striving to get better, to, to overcome this person. I thought if you had the end of the game where you're either you're Noble Six and you're trying to get everyone to get away and you do a square off against the Arbiter, and that final scene, and you your guy gets killed by him, and that gives it gives everyone else enough time to start their uh, ships and start getting away. I thought that would have been even better of an ending because the ending of the game was already good. But like, imagine you had that as your development of your story and the ending. I thought that would be a top notch because it gives you more importance. It says not only did we deliver Cortana, but we also slowed down the Covenant to allow you guys to get that little head start before hell starts breaking loose in Halo 1. And that's where I kind of fault the game, is that you had the ability to set everything up, and you didn't do that. You, you gave us a good team, you gave us a solid story, great multiplayer, good maps, all this stuff, but you missed out on easy opportunities which you could have landed on. I think that's like my biggest fault in this game. So, uh, so Haki, I'm going to go with you first. Number five for you. 
Yeah, so number five, um, I agree with you. I have Halo Reach as, as number five. Um, and again, the cons that you hit on were pretty much exactly what I was thinking as well. Um, you know, you have to, they had to add a backstory to, to the Arbiter. I think that would have been um, an awesome um, view of, of, you know, the villain that, that should have been, you know. Um, again, like Langella Kill said, you don't need Master Chief to have a successful uh, Halo game. And this was, I think, um, a great um, example of that. I thought this game was good from the campaign all the way through the multiplayer. Um, you get abilities in the multiplayer, right? So now you feel a little bit more like a Spartan. You can <laughs> you, you can you can run at some point. You have a, a characteristics that you should definitely have as a Spartan. You know, you're not just walking with a gun um, and not able to you know run or, or use a jetpack or, or anything like that. So um, this is my number five. I, it, good campaign. They could have made it a little bit better, um, but good campaign, good multiplayer, um, playability is good. When I uh, play um, the Master Chief Collection, you know, it's it's one of the things that um, uh, that I look for. I'm pretty sure you can choose Halo Reach as one of the uh, one of the games as Master Chief. So that, that's one of my that's one of the games that I do choose for multiplayer. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Uh, so Angelic Hill, you're number five. Yeah, for my Halo 5, I have Halo Infinite. Um, and I actually, I'm not sure about you guys, but my list, I have tiers. So for my 10 and 9 was my disappointing Halo games. And for 8, 7, and 6 was my okay to average. And then from 5, 4, I think is good. And then my top 3, I think is upper echelon great games. So to me, you know, I, these were close, my next two. Um, and I still think of them as good games. So, but I'm going Halo Infinite. Um, this is the most Halo feel to a game since Reach, um, in both campaign and multiplayer. Campaign was good. This is obviously 343's best game, without a doubt. I don't think there's a debate um, that this is their best game. But I can't give them a pass for some of the modern gaming issues that we see to this day. Right, they put out a game that is not fully complete. The multiplayer is kind of a hollowed out shell. And although it's a lot of fun and we play a lot of hours of it, there's not a lot there. And then you see them add a game like Attrition and then they take it out because they say they want to update it. Right? Like they don't even let you enjoy some of the good ideas that they have uh, for a period of time. And then I let's just go back into the ugliness of modern gaming, which is the microtransactions so the the and again this is like like hockey i'm not spending money um but i know a lot of people who have and a lot of people who will and they're charging between six and ten dollars for colors and things you could put on your warthog and that is just ridiculous i mean they give ten dollars you spend ten dollars on the battle pass when you first get it i saw them charging ten dollars for a color uh, a skin and a pose so you spend a full battle pass price for three things. And that is just, that is crazy. That is just unbelievable. I hate that concept. Uh, we see it a lot in a lot of games, but to me, if you're going to compare it now to the series, that deserves knocking for, for not having a full multiplayer. Um, and it eventually will come, but that's part of that modern gaming BS where it's season passes and we'll, we'll add this stuff later on. And then sometimes it gets pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And I hate that. The other games on the list came with complete games or more complete games. And that's why Halo Infinite dropped down to five. But it's a good game. But I'm just, when you got to thread the needle, that's what's going to knock it down to five for me. Yeah. Yep. I, I, listen, this is where we're, start, we're switching up all of our spots. At number four for me, I went Halo Infinite. And I, I was debating between five and four with Halo Reach and Halo Infinite for a while now. And I thought when I did my whole video on this in my top 10, I looked at Halo Infinite and I said, you know, what are like the, the biggest things that they did to kind of fix, you know, games from the past? They took Halo 3 and this felt like the best successor to Halo 3 that we've seen up to this point. And what they did was they took the gameplay, they perfected it almost to the point where it's a mix of a little bit faster than Halo 3, but not too as fast as Halo 5, which is what most people wanted. You added you added equipment back in the game, but kind of balanced it out pretty well. So now people actually sought out equipment. I mean, Halo 3, I was like, 
yeah, if I pick up something, I'll pick up something, but I don't really need it. In Halo Infinite, you felt like, oh, I'm going to go find something because there's a lot of good equipment you can use in this game. The sprinting debate is over. Like, There's no debate anymore on whether sprint should be added to Halo because they fixed it. 20% faster speeds, it appeases both groups, those that like it, those that don't. The guns, the assault rifle, I thought like, was the best assault rifle in the entire series. Battle rifle is still top-notch like it's supposed to be, and for the most part, the guns were pretty solid. Maps, maybe other than one, which we all kind of debate that we don't really like at this point, just because we played a little, we play launch a little too much. But most maps have been pretty solid. Um, the in the story, I thought was good. Not, uh, you know, it they never felt boring to me. The only downside is that there's not a lot of uh, a variety of environments. But you know, that's that's obviously a, a con here. But um, you know, there's a lot of good things. The multiplayer was good. Campaign was good. The the new new characters I liked. The cons of this game are going to be mainly because of the whole progression system slash microtransaction problem. Um, if you took out that as an issue, this game would be. I like. I don't know if it would jump other games in my list, but I think it would be even more solidified that number four for me because of the fact that that's like one of the biggest downsides. The customization problem that I see. Uh, it, now, granted, not saying you can't customize because you can't. You can customize more in halo infinite than you did in halo 5 because they used to just limit you to like what your chest piece and shoulders have to be exactly part of one thing the only thing you had in halo 5 was your helmet and chest piece that's it halo 4 was a mixture of a both halo infinite had more customizations to both those games combined but then when you compare it and you keep touting that this is just like halo reach customizations and it's not even near that like it's not even close that's where it, it gets its downside the customizations and progression is a problem and i felt like you know you i, I don't know when i came, when it came to uh, comes to the to the campaign you could have given some of these villains more light like give them more screen time i felt like they were pretty good villains good backstories just didn't give them enough time to shine in my opinion but so all right that's my that's my number four hockey what's your number four all right are you guys ready yep okay <laughs> I wish I can do my four and three right away, just so I can explain. But my number four, and just take a deep breath, is Halo 1. Oh, wow. All right? Wow. One. Um, listen, Halo 1 it was the legendary Xbox game, right? That's the game that Xbox blew up on. It was an amazing game. Uh, there was barely any cons. Um, the multiplayer was fantastic. The campaign was also very, very, very good. Um, I think really the only con for the campaign, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, was there wasn't really a, a main villain, really, yeah. right? Yep. Um, it was another covenant. Just yeah, the covenant, it, yep. Yeah, it was just covenant. There was no big leader that you were going to face, you know. Um, but that's literally the only con of the game. Um, again, the multiplayer was like, that was the reason why I got an Xbox. Like I was PS1, PS2, um, then it was Xbox. You know, it was the, this new gaming system, you know, Halo, Aliens, you know, it was it was wild, you know, and me and my brother got it and it was like, it was the best game, but kind of like Langelic Hill um, was mentioning like that game at that time was like wild legendary, you know, like literally people were jumping from, playstation to xbox just because of halo just because of 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 this game so um what i'll say is if the things don't happen that need to happen for my number three halo one will go back to my three spot but i will explain my number three when we get there i got you so angelica <laughs> what's your uh, number what's your number yeah my four, four is four? reach um, so I had Halo Reach at four. Um, and again, I think Infinite and Reach are really, really close to each other in a ranking. Um, I like Infinite's campaign better than Reach, but I like Reach's multiplayer as a whole better than Infinite. Um, and not because of the gameplay. I think gameplay, they're, you know, they both have really good feel to it. But just as a gamer, if you're, if you're somebody who loves customization, if you're somebody who loves seeing the ranking system, where like, you know, you got the ranking and, you know, the different uh, rankings that you can get. It was just, it, it was just overall better for Reach. And I also liked the maps that Reach had and the campaign wasn't bad. So if the campaign was a notch down, uh, Halo Infinite would have jumped over Reach, but it really wasn't bad. And I, I like that you mentioned, you know, it's kind of like a save of Private Ryan. That's what it kind of felt like. 
Um, and, and this was another example about that you can have a good Halo game, good Halo campaign that is not solely focused in on cheat. Um, and they did a pretty good job of it. There were obviously flaws like you guys mentioned before in the campaign, but overall as a full product, right? Better progression, better customization. Um, it gave you that option on how you wanted to kind of be a Spartan. You, did you want to have the jetpack? Did you want to have the armor lock? Did you want to have so, you know, something else? and change your style to it. Um, just all that together, uh, to me, gives it the slight nod over Infinite. Hey, like I said, debates, man. This is where we're debating. Now it's time to number three. I, I already could tell Hockey's, no, Hockey's number three. We're going to save that <laughs> best for last year. Yeah. Number <laughs> three for me is Halo Combat Evolved. And this is where, like, your Angelica was kind of mentioning the tier list. I kind of have mine a little bit different. I, I, I th my top three is similar. I think the same logo where it's like the uh, same banner saying this is like the legendary spots. Halo, Halo 1 Comet Evolved is a legendary game. It set Xbox to be what it is in the first place. And, you know, story wise, it was pretty straightforward. It didn't really, uh, you know, vary too much. It was just like there's a, there's a cult religious alien force trying to take this ring. And, you know, the humans find out it's not a good thing. They stop them, and that's as simple as that. And it, it's simple, but it's very. It had a lot of lore behind it, which I thought that when they kept expanding on that, made the game even more impressive. And this is made in 2001. I mean, this is this is made a long time ago. This really made Xbox what it is because you really look at the launch titles along with it. They literally were nothing. Halo made Xbox what it is today. And the only um, the cons I have are first year. And uh, Haki mentioned this where. Uh, you know, you don't really have an antagonist. You have the Covenant. And a part of me kind of gives Bungie a little bit of a pass because I don't think they really thought that much into that point. You know, they kind of just said, this is a bad guy group. That's it. Um, the other the other issue I have uh, is there's no multiplayer for the most part, but I'm also not going to give them too much on that because this mm -hmm. is also, uh, you know, this is 2001 here. We're talking about before, this is pre-Xbox Live. This is pre all that stuff. You're playing split screen multiplayer, you're playing land support. That's about it. There's no other method. Um, there's no customizations really. They didn't go that much depth into something that they didn't really like focus on yet. So the downside is just basically that there this is just a legendary game, and there's just other games that are just, in my opinion, you know, more impactful, in my opinion. Like, that's what I kind of look at. That. Like there's just there, they just have more depth according uh, back behind this game it's legendary for its time it's great it just there's more games that have more impact there and can i can i just say something real quick yeah about so about the like halo one multiplayer i like, obviously there's there wasn't um like you said there wasn't an uh yeah, on, um, the xbox there was no xbox yeah, live there xbox was uh, split yeah there's split split screen. multiplayer yeah, yeah. Were, were you playing with uh, i think you can play up to four friends yeah. right yeah. So yeah, you can. Yep. Was, and then on split screen, and then you can do the yeah. LAN. You can do system link where you can system, connect. Yeah, 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 you can connect your Xbox to somebody else's, and that's where you can start yeah, getting yeah. like those so those parties was, going. That part of multiplayer was yeah yeah. yeah. Was, that's, was, like, that's like that's like that's like ancient compared to what yeah. we're like talking yeah. about today. But that's the point. That's it's the like, original multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. literally. That's the original. But that that's the thing. Like this game revolutionized split screen multi uh, first person shooter games. Like. I mean, granted, people are like, well, did they have that in Goldeneye? But like, yeah, Goldeneye, like, yeah. comparable to like gameplay, like, yeah, th you know, they did. It was it was good and all, but like, Halo like revolutionized how it played. That was the that you was know? the big point. Like, yeah, that was that, yeah. that was. But I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Angelica, what's your number three? Yeah, I have the same one. Halo uh, Combat Evolved. The impact of the game itself puts it in the top three. And again, you're talking about a game from 2001, so you're obviously not going to see, hey, does the graphics hold up to today? Obviously not. Um, but the playability still holds up. I mean, the campaign playability is a really fun campaign. It gives you different environments. Now, it does feel a li like linear, right? Back in that day, they didn't have a lot of branching out type of campaigns or open world style type of campaigns. So it was obviously going to be linear, but they gave you different environments. You were out in... in you know, out on the ring onto a grass field or, you know, kind of similar to that. You went to a snowy place, you went to a nighttime, you went to on a ship, right? Like they put you in different environments. Um, and also there wasn't a lot of characters, but you, you liked guys like Captain Keys and you, you know, you kind of grown it. And when the flood got introduced, the eerie feeling of them coming in, the impact of the story in the game really blew up. 
um, and made Halo a name for itself. And for that, it, it goes into, and obviously, like you said, it revolutionized that split screen linked up game and, and it brought a lot of fun playing against uh, people close to you. So, you know, that's kind of, and you got that with N64 and PlayStation 2 and stuff. But to me, it felt like this was kind of a, a step up um, when, when Halo came out. Yeah. All right. All right, Hockey. You're, uh, what's your right. number three here? My number three, as you might know now, is Halo Infinite. Now, um, like Langella Kill said, it didn't really come out as a as a full game, right? Um, and there were bugs, like right at, like they were right after the game came out, the whole big team battle not working correctly. So I wanted to start off on the cons, right? Because I think the pros will outweigh the cons if things are done correctly. But um, biggest thing is opportunity, right? So that's something that they have. They have a big opportunity. I think they have the biggest platform for success with this game. Um, it's going to be the game for the next like seven or eight years, right? Or even mm -hmm. longer. I think. Like, I think a 10 year, 10 year long game. Year. I think. Yeah. So that's why I have it at number three, right? Um, they're obviously not going to add anything to Halo. I'm not Halo one. I'm not taking anything away from Halo one, but I think that the pros could outweigh all of the cons. If they fix everything that they have to do with the microtransactions, if, you know, they fix every type of bug that, that we've seen so far, at least, and everything that they can add to the game in the next 10 years, I think could get them to it can get it to the third and make it stay at number three for me. If they can add co-op, right? Add co-op, add some type of battle royale, which would be fantastic. Add a bunch of maps on multiplayer. Um, add Forge so the Halo community can do their thing. Um, I really think that Halo Infinite. It's kind of wild that I put it at my number three right now, but I have such a positive outlook. It has a higher ceiling, is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. There's such a ceiling to this game, and there, I have such a positive out outlook of what it can be um, that it's at my number three. And if they do it right, I think it can be at number three and stay at number three. I don't think it'll ever hit the 2-1. Um, I think mine's going to be a little different than both of yours, my 2-1, but um i think it could be like one of the best halo games that has ever come out uh but they gotta do it correctly if they don't do it correctly if they don't release co-op and it doesn't work correctly if they like mess up forge which i don't really know how they would do they just have to have a platform and it's really the community that that um kills it on forge um and if you know they they change at least the vehicles god forbid they change the banshee i don't want to get shot by a battle rifle three times and blow up um, if they change and and add more stuff, this could definitely be a top three Halo game, in my opinion. And they got ten years to do it, so <laughs> yeah. they will not um, take. I'm gonna say right now, they are not taking ten years. No, no, no. If they well, do, let's just assume five. Let's just give them five. Yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. five. That's a lot. That's even a lot. Well, of listen, if they if they could do yeah. if if they can make it to a top three Halo game in five years, that's that is a bit that's a big deal, but. I'm, if they could just add those fixes for Forge and Co-op, then like, all right, this, that's that's a and that's supposed to come out this year. Like, that's the point. If it comes out yeah. this year and they actually can, you know, not screw it up, then that would already give it a pretty solid spot. Um, but let's keep going. We're at our top two here. My number two is Hill Three, and this is where it gets people. I've probably gotten thrown so much stuff at me already when I came out with my video. Um. Halo 3, in my opinion, has very little cons, right? The, the the positives are the story is phenomenal. You you're continuing that that arc between having the Arbiter and Master Chief being that like duo that's like not really friends, but they respect each other and they're kind of fighting alongside each other through the whole story, which is great to see. Um, your character development of a lot of these big characters like Johnson and Miranda Keys are pretty solid too. The the whole battle between the elites and humans was always a cool concept of mine seeing them like square off at that like meeting almost like a mafia meeting where like they're about to fight like straight up just fight and then it's up to the chief and arbiter to kind of settle these problems um and the whole arc between cortana and chief being like the fact that cortana's 
captured and chiefs like you could feel that he's hurting like he's he's not the same dude and he's always constantly thinking about like all right i, I couldn't save her she's probably doing something bad's happening right now and i can't do this i can't i can't like i have to do something about this i like that concept the music was in my opinion it's it's i think the second best soundtrack out there i it's hard for, but i i gotta say the piano theme that they always now connect with chief is synonymous with the character now it was so nice that they did that uh, multiplayer, in my opinion, probably the best multiplayer of the entire series. Um, I, I think they all the gameplay mechanics were smoothed out perfectly. Maps were good. Um, they have like probably the one of my favorite maps ever is Guardians. It was like legit still to this day one of the best maps out there. If you look at every top five list of maps, it's probably always in everyone's top five. Um, and like Valhalla was like the variation of like uh, uh, of of uh, of hemorrhage that they created a new version of it. And it's a lot of people love it. I, I like it too, but it's not my top five or my top three, in my opinion. It's it's up there. Um, the cons of this game, though, were not not a lot of them, but one of the biggest weird, the weirdest changes was the prophet of truth. It was like seeing his character change from being a, a, a conniving, smart, like sci, uh, a smart, evil dude to now being this psychopath that legit. The character change made no sense. I, and now, granted, I and I mentioned this in my video. I get the voice actor had had passed away, and that you had to change the voice actor, and that wasn't the problem. It was just you changed the character entirely. Like, and that's where I was kind of like confused on. The ending of the game was like perfect, and I honestly thought if you ended the series with Halo Three, I would have been sad to see it go. But I also would have been completely understandable because that was one of the best endings out there. Um, and yeah, I mean, for the most part, that was kind of like. My, my cons for this game they're, they're, and the only actually the only other thing i saw were map sizes sometimes in big team battle the size of the maps were like annoying because there's not a lot of movement so you're if you get caught in like sand trap with no vehicle and you now you got to hike the entire way and then you get killed by something random then guess what you go back to the beginning and you're hiking again that was one of the things i didn't really like if they made all the map sizes to the same extent as like zanzibar then like everything would be fine because that map's small enough on big team battle that you're feeling like you're always going to be involved in something. So Halo Three didn't have a lot of cons, but th there were some things that could did push it to number two. So uh, let's go hockey first. What's your number two? All right, so uh, my number two is Halo Two. Whoa, wow, um, yeah. So listen, I have a split between Halo Two and Halo Three, right? But I chose Halo Two. Um, and I'll explain why I chose Halo 3 a little bit, um, you know, uh, when when we get there. But the reason why Halo 2 is at 2, um, it, it is one of the best, if not could be the best Halo game ever. And the reason is the campaign. The campaign is um, the best campaign, I think, out of all the Halo series, no matter what. Um, the opening scene, you know, between the Arbor and the Master Chief was like, the most legendary opening scene ever like you see like two different parts of of you know good and bad like master chief being the greatest and then the, you know the arbiter um labeled as like a heretic you know uh and just being able to obviously play both of those parts um in the campaign the co-op campaign i mean me and my brother at age 28 and him at age 31 we still play that campaign whenever i go over his house that is the best campaign hands down of any halo um i mean the, the story master chief and, and cortana and everything there um it was fantastic even the the multiplayer it's it's a fantastic multiplayer um like i said i don't think infinite even with the the five to ten year game would ever catch up to these two but um I'll explain a little bit more why Halo 3 is my number one, but that was really why Halo 2 is my, my number two. It's got the greatest campaign, hands down, um, of, of pretty much any any game. I mean, it might be even my top three video game campaign ever, you know, mm -hmm. in my top three of, of all, all, the, all video games. So, but, yeah. So, uh, Langelica, what's your number two? My number two is Halo 3. And uh, I don't think it could get over that, but this is another close one. So I agree with Haki on this, that they are close. Um, but Halo 3, they did a really great job of, and they could have ended Halo right here. Like this could have been the end because they did a really good job of wrapping it up. Um, they did a good job. Of, I love having the Chief and Arbiter together. When you're doing co-op, one could play as Chief, the other one is as, as the Arbiter. 
was a nice, cool thing that they had in there. Um, and I thought they just did a really good job um, pretty much ending the story when you defeat the prophet of truth and then you defeat the grave mine was all really good. And they had good music. The map setup was pretty solid. Um, you had to play it on legendary because I feel like heroic was just too a little bit too easy, which I guess is a little bit of a con if we're going to nitpick things. Um, but the bad things uh, for the campaign, like you mentioned, the prophet of truth character change uh didn't really make sense it didn't really make sense and another thing that was a con i did wish that there were some boss battles um you know in halo 2 i didn't think they had the greatest boss battles but they actually had some boss battles and in halo 3 you never really fought the grave mine right you could have fought the grave mine maybe somebody could have been promoted from the prophet of truth as a new chieftain or someone as a second in command uh, for the brutes something right you just didn't get that kind of those big moment uh, boss battles um that you could have had so it felt like there was a little bit of an opportunity missed uh multiplayer i loved love the multiplayer that was probably my most fun playing uh, multiplayer besides my number one game um and so that's why it goes to number two uh halo three yeah i i agreed on like those other parts that you mentioned with, with not, not fighting the grave mine like all this time i thought that that moment where chief and uh and arbiter were like back to back i was like all right now it's time to face off against the grave mine. And then like, he's like, all right, I'm out. And then he just sends in like some, some yeah. soldiers. And I was like, Oh, like, dude, you had us ready for the fight. This dude. Other th and and uh, I'm sure Aki will mention this, but like Halo three had that cool mechanic where if you're playing co-op campaign on Halo three, uh, you, one player is playing as a chief. The other one's playing as Arbiter. I was like, that was like, I thought it was like perfect. It felt like so good. And like, you, obviously you start with different guns. And, like the look of it's different. Like and it was just like, ending. Can I just yeah. say the ending was really good. I know yeah. it was like sad for the Halo community, but like he ends up being like Chief ends up being alive when he thought he was dead. Everyone else thinks he's dead. You know, like Arbor gives his like, you know, you know, like deuce, to, I, I salute yeah, you. His peace to the to the human people, like to the humans. And uh and then Chief is out in space knowing like, hey, I did it and I'm you know, call me when you need me, type of thing, which was really cool. It was a really good ending for for the series until obviously uh it started up again. So let's now the final the final one here. Um, I want let me give let me give Haki his, his due here. He needs to explain himself. What's your number one, Haki? Yeah, so so my number my number one is Halo three, and I, I think I got my thoughts jumbled up a little bit. It was Halo three that you were chief and arbiter, right? Not well, yeah, well no, unless you play as both anyway. But yeah, when you the, the co op on Halo three has you where you play. <laughs> One character in the split screen is playing his chief yellow, yeah, but you do play through the bolt anyway. Yeah, yeah. You play okay. The bolt. I got a little mixed up there, but yeah. So, Halo Three is my number one, right? Um, and here's the reason why: uh, Halo Two, like I said before, the greatest campaign in all Halo Halo series, maybe even the greatest campaign top three of all games, in my opinion. Um, I have always been a person who likes multiplayer, like more than the campaign. Um, Halo 3's multiplayer is the best multiplayer of any Halo series. Um, even when I'm playing like COD or Battlefield, I put more time into the multiplayer because I like just playing against, you know, other human beings or playing with you guys on, on a squad. Um, I, I think the multiplayer is more playable um, or has more playability than the campaign. Obviously, you can run through the campaign a couple of times, um, but multiplayer, I think I put way more hours into. So... That's the reason why Halo 3 is my number one, because I'm a multiplayer guy. It has the best multiplayer of all time. Um, the playability is unmatched. I can go on Master Chief and there's not one game that is not, um, you know, there's not one map that I hate from from Halo 3, right? Um, whenever I go on the Master Chief collection, Halo 3 is always checked off. Usually so is Halo 2, um, but Halo 3 is always a multiplayer that, I can go on and play and just have tons of fun. Mm -hmm. um, campaign was fantastic. It wasn't better than Halo 2, but it was still fantastic. And I'm pretty sure it was the Halo 3, the end mission where you're driving the Warthog. Yeah. And the yep. plane blowing up, right? So I'm always I'm always the Warthog driver. If I'm not in the Banshee, if I'm not in the Wasp, Marsilio or Marsman, Langella Kill knows I love driving the Warthog. They're usually gunning. Um, or we're you know going to capture the flag that it's we squat up in the warthog. I'm always the driver. That is 
probably my favorite mission. Yeah, it's, it's a it's like all mission. Yep. Just like no, it is. a fun mission, like you're driving, you're running over the flood and everything, and then you got a you know big jump into the into the plane afterwards. So the multi the campaign was fantastic. Um, so I think as a whole game, that's why I have Halo Three as my number one. I'm a multiplayer guy. It's got the best multiplayer, and the campaign is just almost as good as two. So, um, there's my answer. Hopefully, you guys aren't. <laughs> no, yeah. you're you're good, dude. Uh, yeah. So, uh, me and Angelica Hill seem to have the same number one. So, Angelica, I'll let you go first. What's what's your number one? Yeah, it's Halo Two, and to me, I think again, I actually don't think hockey's crazy. I just uh, I think the slight nod goes to two because of the impact. Uh, that Halo 2 created at the time. And it revolutionized Xbox Live, Halo 2. And um, that's actually the game that got me to Microsoft, was Halo 2, because that's what uh, pushed me. I was always Nintendo and PlayStation all the way up until Halo 2 came out, and Halo 2 is what got me onto Microsoft. Um, so to me, the impact, me personally, was getting me into the new system um, and playing that game, starting with... You know, we, we hear all the stories on the, how the game was developed and how it could have been an absolute dud. So, but they were able to make it work and they didn't just make it work. They made a historic game and the campaign, the, imagine making Halo 1 and it is game of the year, focusing on Chief. And then in the second one, they decide to split the airtime between Master Chief, who is a beloved character, and this new character who you're not even human. It's an alien. And like, I like the the chance of it being an absolute failure was high and they nailed it out of the park and it was just really, really good writing it really and like I was mentioning before Arbor is one of the most beloved characters in the entire Halo series right and so it's hard to do what they just did but they knocked it out of the park I love how you were splitting missions you know one mission your chief and then you hop on off to the arbiter and the arbiter now you're doing a mission for for the covenant and like that part was so cool because you're getting two sides of the same war. And so to me, that was a really cool uh, setup that they had. I love how the different uh, you know enemies that you fought, right? In the beginning, Covenant is fighting a heretic group of the elites. Uh, the humans are doing what they're doing. Then the Flood, you know, get involved. And so it was just a really cool setup. I love the character. Uh, you know, you really, that's when I really grew into the characters of the series, you know, when you have Chief and Johnson, you have the Arbiter, you have the bad guys in Tartarus, you have those prophets. Like, all that stuff was such a great mix. And then, obviously, online, the dual-wielding weapons was a really cool introduction. Um, the maps I really loved, too. And, uh, you know, it was just, to me, the making of the game was a lot a lot of flaws. I know people were going to say, how do you end the game with the Arbiter and not Chief? Right, Because the last mission, you were the Arbiter, and you were fighting... Right, it wasn't the you weren't in the game with Chief, so I do understand some of that. But I actually thought they did a good job of it, and so to me, it gets the slight edge on the impact of the game at the time, uh, and that's why I'm going Halo Two. Yeah, so I'll just kind of add just a few things. Halo Two, in my opinion, it, it, same thing with me. It got me to be first to convince my dad to get us an Xbox in the first place, and then that was what got us the Xbox Live. Right, Halo Two kind of has that special spot where it just it got us to play these games for the first time. One of the other big things, it expanded the, the universe. Like it made it, it was very narrow in its view with Halo 1 because it was a starting game. Like it was, they came up with this concept and like, all right, this is the first game. But Halo 2 now expanded the lore to being so much more. The game itself made it more, more all about perspective, as in everyone was always thinking, you know, what this, this crazy alien group is just doing this, their own thing because uh, they're nuts. But then Halo 2 kind of came out and said, they're just acting this way because this is their perspective on the same things that are happening from the other side. And that's what, how the beginning really gives you that sense where it's like, yeah, you know, I get it that, you know, Chief is his, is his legend, right? He's getting honored for, you know, everything he's, he's did in Halo 1. On the other side, you have the dude who was the commander in that same event is now being branded as a heretic because he lost. And now you're playing, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, giving, you're giving people a sense of, Wow, I like the Arbiter. He's this dude that has a comeback story. Like, and I kind of in the video I made, I kind of said, "Well, they, that three for three. That's how you make a character. How people like a character. You give them something to say. I, I'm rooting for this dude. I want to. I, I want this guy to do well, so he doesn't. He's not like 
branded a bad guy for something he didn't have any really control over. And then you you no, play he, like, develop his, like he was the he, he was a commander. I get yeah. And I meant like, more like this is him trying to re like redeem himself. Yeah, regain that honor that he lost. Yeah. And I think that's like what I mean. Like to give them something to say. All right, I'm sh- I'm hoping for this guy to do well. You know, and and now it's like you're connected to both characters. You're already connected to Master Chief, but now you're going to be connected to, to the Arbiter now. Um, and for just multiplayer wise, I thought the reason why I gave this an edge over Halo Three. Um, was because the map sizes, I think, were a little bit better. I think there you can do a lot more navigation, a lot easier compared to Halo Three. I I still think Halo Three has the better multiplayer, but 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 really just by a little bit. Um, Halo Two, I think, it had the better story overall and just slightly below multiplayer. And I'm giving it the edge because of that. But the cons are really just going to be the the left the, the left this game on a massive cliffhanger. And the only reason why that was the case, case was because the studio was so overzealous that they couldn't finish the game. So this game technically wasn't finished, but it was like, this is not a finished product. And it was still the best Halo game, in my opinion, in, in Legella Kill's opinion, in the entire series, even if that's the case, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's our list, guys. I mean, at the end of the day, I, like I said, there's a lot of debate going on on, on what is the best game, what is not, but... I think we had a lot of in-depth conversation here about that. And, and if anyone here is is does not like our list, especially Hockey's list, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, please make sure you put your list in the in the comments below. Uh, but now, yeah, but, but tell us why you think so. I mean that that would be kind of the that's the big thing. Tell us why you put the list there and and, and, and wh- which games are best and which games are not. And that'd be a good discussion. But let's move on to the the last topic, and that's really the Halo TV series. Um, now. This is a this this Halo this this commercial came out during the AFC Championship game, um, and a lot of I know a lot of people that like I had students that even contacted me and were like, "So what do you think of this uh, the show and the, everything?" And I what I'm going to ask is, firstly, what are some things you're excited about, uh, and then what you're kind of nervous about? And I'll I'll start off with me first. I'll, uh, we'll have, we'll do this. We'll do we'll, we'll, each of us will give at least like maybe like two things, two, three things that you're excited about or two, uh, two things that you're excited about, two things you're not, you're a little nervous about just so at least we're kind of, we're not talking all day here about this. But so one of the first things I'm a little like, I'm excited about is the look of the actual show matches similarly to what we saw with hockey and mentioned that live action trailer for ODST. It kind of mirrored that in a way where it made me like, for finally getting that live action that we were itching to see a little bit more animation than that one, but it was, it looks pretty good and I'm excited to see how it goes out in, in full fashion. So, uh, hockey, what was one thing you're excited about? And we'll do a round table. We'll go with Langella kill and back around again. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm just excited to see, you know, master chief on the big screen. Uh, like we said, the ODST video, like that got me super hyped back then. Um, and I've always wanted, I always thought that they would be able to do something like this. And if they nailed it, it could be like, you know, like one of the, if they did it correctly, it could have been like one of the best movies or best TV shows like out, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm definitely excited to see him on the big screen, like in the commercial if, if no one has seen it yet, or if anyone hasn't seen it yet, uh, just YouTube it. It's awesome. Like, yeah. Just, the start point where like he just picks up the turret like that's still master chief you know like i was so hyped when i first saw that see like the blood on his on his mask and everything so um i'm I'm just i'm excited just in general and langelica what's one thing that you were excited about yeah i'm cautiously optimistic about this one and i think chief looks good i thought the cgi and chief looked pretty good in the commercial if they can replicate that into the show um at least production wise and having to look at chief is going to look pretty cool. I thought that was one of the biggest takeaways I got from that commercial. One of the other, uh, and this we'll go back around again, see what you guys think of another thing you're excited about. Another thing I'm excited about is they're finally giving more background into like the Spartan program and reach and things like that. They never did. And like the only time you ever got any information about the, the Spartan program or chief's origin story is through animated shorts. Like I'm having to watch like halo, uh, the fall of reach on a like a short that's on Halo Waypoint, like just to get background on Master Chief and his crew. Like, like this is the first time I'm actually going to see a live action version or a modern version that's not like a background animated show. Like, 
this is that's that it got me gets me excited because I do recognize some things that they talk about in the trailer, and I'm like, that's from his origin story, and I think that's a pretty cool thing to actually get into now. So, uh, so Haki, what's another thing that you're excited about? Uh, yeah, I guess like you were just saying, like like the the lore, like all the background story. Um, you know, I'm into the video games, into all that stuff. I'm not too into the actual background of, of you know uh, Halo and, and the lore. So, um, if they're going to go in in depth, I'm, I'm definitely excited about, um, like you said, the, the Spartan program and everything. I'm, I'm excited to learn kind of how all this happened. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I think that's one of the more exciting things about about the show and again if if they're able to pull something off and and it's not just a one and done um i think they got something here without a doubt so uh langelico what is is there anything else that you're excited about here yeah real uh probably two quick ones Mm -hmm. i'm happy that they're doing a tv show not a movie um i think the lore is too deep um, and there's too much to go into, I think, it, for it to be a successful movie. So I'm glad that they're doing a TV show um, for it so that you can. Because when you have a TV show and, and it, you, you hit it on the beginning, you know, you can really, and you get a couple seasons, you can really go into detail. Um, the second thing is I'm actually just rooting for, you know, good video games or whether it's good anime going and becoming shows so that you can kind of see uh, these shows come or these storylines come to life. Um, you know, I'm rooting for those type of things to happen. I know you're going to get, uh, you're going to get a last of us show coming soon. Um, you have the halo one coming out. The Witcher has already been kind of going and, and obviously there's mixed things. I like the Witcher stuff, but like, I really hope things work out cause there's, there's a lot of good opportunity there. If you can hit on these and these are big ones, right? The halo last of us, like the Witcher, like these are big ones. And if you can hit this, you'll see more and more games try to get pulled into the shows if it's successful. Yeah. So uh, now the big question is, what are your concerns? And I'll start off first. Um, Paramount Plus's non-use of blue on Cortana makes me a little, a little weary um, because there's, you know, I, I could make a video and have myself turn into Cortana, be blue, just put me blue <laughs> and I can do the same production value, um, but more production value than what Paramount Plus did. Um, that is a possibility, and it kind of concerns me that they don't want to take take the time of day to just go through the scenes and just put blue on Cortana. It just makes me kind of confused here. It's um, a layup. It's literally a layup. It's literally the easiest thing you could do. Like just everyone's like, you you might have to you know Sonic the Hedgehog this thing. Like Sonic the Hedgehog literally had to go into the movie and change the entire animation from the from the ground up. Like all you need to do for this guys is put blue on Cortana. That's it. Make her look like she's an actual AI because that's what she is. She's not a person. She's an AI. Like that. It looks like make a her blue. Person. Make that's her blue. Make her purple. You go back to the origin. Make her purple if you want. I don't care. Just make them make her a color. That's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, well, Angelica, I'll go first for you on this one. What's the one concern you have? Yeah, I mean, you took one of mine, which was the, like just the nitty details on Cortana. It just doesn't make sense to me. But I'll go another one. The female antagonist. <laughs> We saw multiple times the female antagonist supposedly working with the Covenant, and supposedly she is human. So to me, I just can't think in the Halo universe. They hate humans. Why would they keep this woman? Like I can't think of one, but I'm just really nervous how they're going to write how the Covenant has aligned with the human female antagonist. I'm not against females being an antagonist. I just don't. It just doesn't make sense to me because i've seen her multiple times so obviously and there's are a couple still photos i don't know if anyone's watched it but there are still photos with her in a room with the prophets of truth with an elite i'm assuming is uh the commander uh, officer like she's obviously a big part of the covenant and it just doesn't make sense to me i I, i'm interested to see i'm optimistic um but i'm cautious about it because i just don't understand how that would be possible Aki, what's a concern you have here? Uh, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys hit it on the head. I, I hope it's not, you know, like a, a super woke TV show. I just need it to be a Halo show, you know. Um, whatever it takes to make. If they write it and it makes sense, cool. If they just want to be super woke and and write a bad TV show, that's not going to work. Then, and then I'm going to be mad. Um, I think. Mars, uh, Mars man, you had mentioned that 
it's going to be an alternative timeline. So yes, that, that kind of goes. Well, I'll add that in as the next component here. Okay. Just to give everyone background, this is technically, they call it the silver line timeline, which means basically this has not does not need to follow the timeline that the games follow. This could be their own timeline that yeah. they make. And in some cases, people can say, oh, that's a good thing because now they don't have to follow the games exactly. But then the other part of that is the games are what made the show even be existed in the first place. So by you not following what they did in the games, I might be a little concerned about in hockey. I want you to tell me yours before I jump into my next one, because I can go on a whole rant about this, this part. So is that what your concern is about this new timeline? Yeah. Like, I don't know what that means, you know, (laughs) This, what is that? like they have they got, oh, I, I can get i can me. get heated i can get out of my chair yeah. and get Don't heated tell me just gonna... before we go to the timeline though any other concerns about the little kid so the little kid seems to be a big part of the so listen i i i, I kind of looked at that as being like before because this technically i'm getting i like i said it's a silver timeline now i don't even know what that means but using my halo nerdness this is supposed to be the time before chief and cortana really are working together to the fullest extent so Chief having that like emotional kid that's like the the yank to his yang where he's like the stone faced person and this kid is the emotion that's fine like I don't care that's okay because the story is that these these this is supposed to be a rebel because the Spartans were made to stop rebels in the beginning like that's fine I'm not concerned with that one but one thing to kind of build on what Haki's saying is that this has to do all with just the wokeness and this is not a story about Master Chief this is a story about this girl. That's where I'm going to have a lot of concerns with because that's not what the Halo series is. It's not a story about this little girl because I'm snoozeflash everyone. This girl doesn't exist in the actual games. So if anyone's here saying, oh, this is what Halo's about. No, if it's stories about this girl and it's only about this girl, then this this is not what the story's about. Right. And uh, that's my whole thing. Like, and maybe it's going to be a Mandalorian where Chief is carrying around this little girl, like, yeah, like carrying around like a baby Yoda <laughs> and his, all over his shoulder. Like, no, it's not what this is supposed to be about, guys. You I know, need- like, yeah, I don't like, need- So, so to kind of like, let's, let's just get, dive into this time because I know what the timeline thing kind of adds into like any other concerns I have here. This just building on whatever, it's like a culmination event. You guys are talking about, I see this new human girl as an antagonist and, the timeline thing gets me the probably the most concerned because I kind of mentioned before that it makes you now have to say, all right, well, you can't rag on us if we change up the story a little bit and do our own thing. I get that, but I also am concerned because this is not Halo then. This is like a new variation of that. And this is turning into that Marvel multiverse stuff, which I'm not really a big keen on in Halo game because it's not Marvel, right? Um, but the biggest thing I have is when you look at all those scenes with that girl talking for the Covenant, I'm seeing things like the Arbiter there and I'm seeing like the prophets and I'm like, what timeline is this? Because I'm thinking like if we're on reach, that's way before he becomes the Arbiter and way before all these things are occurring. So I'm kind of confused on what is the path? Like, are we going light speed in these episodes where like so much stuff is going on that all of a sudden we're jumping from Halo reach to Halo two, then back to Halo one to Halo three, like, to Halo ODST, like where are we going with this storyline? And like watching those that like that commercial, I thought it was cool because the look of it looks great. Like the elites look fantastic, but then I'm like, like what what plot line are we following here? Like what is the path of this story supposed to be? Because for a Halo fan, you're sitting there like I just saw a, a jumbly of Halo theme things, but not in order. Like they're just all over the place, and like I. I don't want this to be like SpongeBob where every new episode is a new storyline and it's just like you're all over the place. Like I want it to be like consistent. I don't mind a Mandalorian style where you have short stories inside a bigger story, but that didn't seem like this. And that's what I'm concerned about. I'm so actually, yeah, I, go I, ahead, Lenjoko. I 100% agree with you on the timeline. And, and there's you mentioned what the reason is, right? So we've seen this kind of in the most recent show. I mentioned The Witcher before. You know, if you say you're going to follow the timeline and you deviate slightly, you're going to get some fans who are going to come after you, right? But I actually think it's probably better to do it that way if you want to deviate a little bit um, to kind of give your own flair um, than to just say, hey, this is our version of Halo. Because the, the opportunity to fail, I feel, is a lot larger. Because like you mentioned, what made the show 
was the games, right? Without the games, you wouldn't have a Paramount Plus TV show for Halo. It wouldn't happen. So, like, the show, and again, you don't have to follow everything to the T, even though some people are clamoring for that. I understand people wanting to put their own flavor into a show and do their own writing. I get that. Um, but if you're going to deviate completely, there's a good opportunity for to turn off the largest audience, which is the Halo fan base. So that, to me, is the biggest concern I have about the timeline when you say, okay, this is our version of Halo. Well, you know, you know this could be a scary moment where these characters might not resonate with the Halo fans, which is going to be the largest audience of Halo. Like, you might be, you know, going for a generic audience, but the ones who are first going to hit it are the Halo fans. And you turn that off, it's going to be a big majority of them that are going to say no to this. Um, that to me, without a doubt, the timeline is definitely one of the biggest concerns and, you know, mixed with those other things. But I will disagree with you about the Mandalorian thing. I actually don't think Mandalorian fits uh, Mandalorian style. I think like the episode style does not fit with Halo because the Mandalorian is yeah, yeah. a bounty hunter, right? So you can do those short stories of him doing missions, right? For ha for Chief, you can do mission episodes, right? Like one episode he's doing a mission, another episode, but like, I don't think you can do like short stories. You know what I mean? I did like though that they had him fight the humans and then fight the aliens. So it kind of gives you some of that lore. Like that's what the Spartans actually were originally made for was to fight other humans, not fight aliens. So that part I do. So, but the, like you said, the big question to me is how much are you deviating from the Halo lore is, mm -hmm. is what I want to know. So Haki, any other concerns that you have? I mean, we, we went through a lot of stuff here. What, what are the concerns you have? Like the other like big concern, I don't know if it was a real reality for this to happen, but uh, the Master Chief is not the real voice actor for yeah. Master Chief. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't get, I don't know if it was actually realistic to get the guy. He's like seven. He's like seventy two years old, the dude. So yeah, I mean, like, like, well, he wouldn't do it. He would just be voice. Yeah, over. I know, I know, but I'm saying that the people were saying that this is supposed to be a younger Chief. That's what and I'm I like. Thinking. Yeah. So keep, yeah, keep going, man. I want to. Yeah. So, so that, when I, you know, I, I, I'm, visually it looks awesome. As soon as he spoke, I was just like, my heart dropped. I was like, oh man. Um. All right. But then I think I was talking to you, Mars man, and yeah, like he's supposed to be like a younger chief in an alternate timeline, you know. So. Again, if they make it Dude, work, make it work. But like, at least he didn't sound like uh, you know Vin Diesel or something. At least, <laughs> at least the guy they picked the dude that I guess you can say like I guess I could see Chief being younger and sounding like that because like I would yeah. also kind of be a little like, dude, this dude, seventy two year old man, like that dude, like Steve Downs' voice as Master Chief, but like a twenty, like a twenty some odd year version of him. I'm like, that doesn't sound like a twenty year old dude at that point either, <laughs> yeah. though. But like because in the main games, he's like forty, like it's like he's like a forty something year old, like. Yeah, he's, and, he's, also, he's eight. and I also understand shows like they want the guy who's playing the character. To yeah, it's a lot easier. Kind actually. of like a connection, an yeah. emotional connection for the also, actor. Um, I, I also heard that the guy who played Mandalorian is the same. It, I was wrong. No, it's a different guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A different guy. I thought that would be perfect if it was him. That'd be fine. That, uh, uh, I forgot his name. Um, but he's not that it, tall. It, bro. No, I, yeah, that's the other thing. They got a dude that's like, literally 6'5". Like, like, he's like 6'5", yeah, so they six make six him towering five. over everyone else. And you probably have to make him even look with camera angles even bigger because, like, Chief, what is he, 6'8"? Like, well, like, in, yeah, in, no, in real life, he's like 7 feet something. Okay. Like, in, yeah, but that's cool. the point. Like, it, that's why they got a 6'5 guy, and then yeah, they, and they, they hired a bunch of short people four. around him and say, all right, you see, this guy's <laughs> massive, right? Yeah, they got Yao um, Ming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Uh, mo most seven foot people can't walk as well as that guy's walking, and that's why they can't really get seven feet people. Um, so I mean, like, listen, the I'm excited though. I'm gonna yeah, give it. Yeah. Shot. I'm gonna give it definitely. A I'm watching it, and listen, uh, Mar Mars Van Gaming. I'm we're watching. watching. We're gonna watch the show, and we're gonna do a review of the show. Like that's okay. something we're we're doing a discussion on the show when it comes out. That's a guarantee. Um, the show comes out March 24th. Now, one thing I'll, I'll kind of set everyone off. I don't want to make everyone into a bad mood here before we end the show, but apparently uh, Marty O'Donnell has apparently sued uh, has sued Xbox over likeness of some of the sounds and music that they had for the Halo TV show, and people were, were questioning whether or not this will have a delay on the show, which is 
just like what like now of all times marty o'donnell if you don't know is the guy who did the soundtrack for the original halo games and the fact that they're using like halo-esque songs and themes i hear that it won't be i hear that this won't be a big problem some people are saying it could be an issue i'm just saying i heard about that literally like maybe uh, a day ago and i was like like what is this actually a th- problem yeah why, like, why? Well, they, have a, deal, they have a whole deal they have a whole yeah they have a whole deal they have a whole deal with a lot of music like microsoft technically the only soundtrack that you can use like royalty free on any sa- only any game or you know streaming thing you do is halo 3 that was the only game that they made a deal with marty o'donnell and Ma- michael salvatore and their music group to basically allow that my, allow Microsoft to have complete ownership of that soundtrack. Every other soundtrack is actually majority owned by the studio that makes the music. So they can't actually you have to get copyright, you know, permission from them specifically, not from Microsoft. And it's a very interesting dynamic and it's just a weird it's like one of those weird things where they made the deal with Marty O'Donnell a long time ago and they really haven't fixed that 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 deal they made. So a lot of the older games soundtracks can't be used for a lot of those trailers but you know that so that's a whole thing so i heard about that and we're gonna wait and see what happens here but march 24th game come a movie uh, gee, i would say movie game tv show comes out and we're gonna watch it on paramount plus i already got my subscription for wow. that show i we already ready to roll okay. we're gonna watch it we're gonna have a review of it um we'll have our discussion and everything but I think that's going to be it for us today. We had a lot of discussion points here, a long discussion on our top 10 and the Halo TV show, a lot of depth here. Um, But please make sure if you like this type of content, please drop a thumbs up and please subscribe for more content. I do a lot of live streams. I do a lot of content videos as well. We're coming out with a highlight tape coming up very soon for the mid February highlights. Um, but like I said, please make sure you, you do those two things and please join us on social media on both Twitter and on our discord. And those are located in the description below. And lastly, if you like merch, I do have merch, a merch shop. I have the hat, I got the sweatshirt, got all the decals. I even have decals of my, my, the Mars man crew itself, both hockey and Angelica will have their own shirts. So drop a buy, support the channel, help us grow from the bottom up and, Thank you for watching. This is Mars Band Gaming signing off, guys. Peace. See ya.